Hello, I'm Don Moyer from Moyer Marine. The purpose of this video clip is to review the adjusting procedure for both the forward and reverse functions of the Atomic 4 reversing gear. And in order that the adjusting procedure itself might make the most sense to you, we'll take a few minutes in the beginning of the video to cover a few of the more important design features of the reversing gear. Virtually all of the other busyness you see when you look through the access opening on top of the aft housing is simply connecting linkage between the shifting lever on the outside of the housing and the gear cage assembly itself. None of that connecting linkage has anything to do with the adjusting procedure. Looking a little deeper into the forward clutch function, most of you are well aware that when you move your shifting lever forward in the cockpit, you're not only engaging the forward clutch assembly, you're also creating a latched condition. Now in this latched forward mode, two sets of pinion gears are held motionless with respect to each other, which creates a mechanical bridge between the tail shaft and the rest of the gear cage assembly. In this condition, the entire gear cage is turning as if it were a solid piece of steel. There are no gears grinding away on each other. There are no bearings running. And in other words, it's a frictionless operation. Since you spend 98% of your time in forward, this explains the incredible longevity of the reversing gear. Now with respect to the two sets of pinion gears I mentioned previously, you can see the inner teeth of those gears through the front face of the gear cage assembly. Now in the latched mode, those gears are held motionless and in that condition they function much more like splines than they do gears. So that when they are slipped over or splined over the small gear at the end of the crankshaft, power is delivered directly from the crankshaft through the reversing gear assembly and onto the prop shaft. Let's now take a little closer look at the forward latching process. When the shifting lever in the cockpit is moved into forward, connecting linkage pulls the operating cone aft and its conical shape spreads the trailing ends of three latching fingers until the ends drop into this groove which runs circumferentially all around this end of the operating cone. Meanwhile, the front of these fingers, being somewhat L-shaped, wrap around the front face of the adjusting collar which wedges the clutch discs together to give us forward. Now let's back up and see how we create reverse no pun intended. As the shifting lever in the cockpit is moved rearward, the connecting linkage again moves the operating cone forward to break the forward latch. As the shifting lever then continues to the rear through the neutral zone, the connecting linkage will begin to squeeze the brake band together until the rotation of the gear cage assembly is totally halted. In that condition, the pinion gears are not only freed to rotate, they are actually forced to rotate and interact with the gear on the back of the crankshaft. It's this interaction of the pinion gears with the gear on the end of the crankshaft that causes the tail shaft to turn in the direction opposite that of the crankshaft to give us reverse. Moving now to our summation of the adjusting procedures. Adjusting the forward clutch assembly is really all about creating a stiffer or a more relaxed latching force. The adjustment is of course made by rotating the adjusting collar either looser or, or, or tighter. Between the adjustments, the collar is held in place by the retaining pin, which has to be loosened before the adjustment can be made. A screwdriver will usually suffice, otherwise a 3 8 inch ratchet might be necessary. 
It's not necessary to remove the pin completely, just far enough for the tip to clear the notch that it's in and the collar can be moved as it's doing now. One notch makes a profound difference in the adjustment in most cases, so we recommend one notch at a time. In this case, I moved it in a clockwise direction to make the latching force stiffer. I'm being very careful that the tip of the pin is squarely in the notch before I would tighten it. If you don't get the tip of the pin in the notch, but pressing on the top edge of the, uh, of the adjusting collar, you're at great risk when tightening the pin that you'll break out a chunk of this fragile cast iron uh, pressure plate in the process. Put the retaining pin in just loosely at first until you go to the cockpit and actually try the, the force required to get the uh, uh, latch in and out. If you need another adjustment, come back to the engine and, and make one more notch adjustment. Realizing there is no latch in the reverse mode, the adjustment is made by simply tightening or loosening the three quarter inch nut on the end of the adjusting bolt through the ears of the brake band. When you tighten this nut, you are narrowing the neutral zone, that distance between forward and reverse. And when you loosen the adjustment on reverse, you are increasing the size of the neutral zone. A ideal setting for reverse is one where you have a comfortable neutral zone for maneuvering in and around tight spots in a marina, but yet you have plenty of cable travel left in the reverse direction to get a secure reverse engagement. So now having seen the conceptual workings of the reversing gear on our bench, let's identify some of the key items as you will actually encounter them inside your aft housing. Here's the important forward adjusting collar. Remember that you have to first back out this retaining pin far enough so that you can rotate the collar clockwise to increase the latching force and counterclockwise to lighten the latching force. In some rare cases, adjusting to one particular notch will allow a small amount of slippage at high par settings while the next stiffer adjustment makes it very difficult to get into the latched mode. For that reason, the very latest Atomic 4s will have adjusting collars with the notches a bit closer together, like this one, which makes it easier to find that sweet spot where the clutch won't slip and it still doesn't require a weight lifter to shift in and out of the forward latch. We use these latest adjusting collars on all our rebuilt engines and reversing gears, and we also make them available in our catalog. But it is necessary to disassemble the entire reversing gear to install a new collar if you don't already have one. We can also see in this actual reversing gear some of the connecting linkage that we couldn't address previously. When you move the shifting lever forward, Two legs extending down from the shifting yoke move the operating cone into position to engage the forward latch. When the shifting lever is moved rearward, the operating cone is pulled out of the forward latch mode while at the same time this reverse bar moves aft to squeeze the ears of the brake band together. This stops the rotation of the gear cage so that the internal pinion gears will rotate the tail shaft in the opposite direction to give us reverse. How far the shifting lever must be moved aft to stop the rotation of the gear cage can be adjusted by loosening or tightening this three quarter inch nut on the end of the brake band adjusting bolt. This nut is prevented from turning between adjustments by a small spring clip around the nut just behind the left ear of the brake band. 
but you can turn this nut inside the spring clip with a three quarter inch box head wrench so it is not necessary to ever remove the retaining clip. This concludes our discussion of the functioning and adjustments of the Atomic for reversing gear. Once properly adjusted, a reversing gear ought to keep its adjustment for several seasons at least. For other parts and services, you can refer to our website at moyamarine.com. Thank you for your attention.